Hey, uh, we decided to do another video from that one Catholic girl, and I skipped ahead a few seconds uh, uh, just to save time, and let's get into it. This one is, does the Catholic Church teach that we are saved by works? Back to my channel. My name is Vanessa, if you are new here. Now, in this week's video, we're going to be talking about salvation and work, specifically what the Catholic Church teaches. Now, the Catholic Church is accused of many different things, and oftentimes what they're accused of is not even true. It's often a misconception that's brought on by Protestant churches. And there's one misconception that is brought up a lot by the Protestant churches about the Catholic Church, is that they say that the Catholic Church teaches that we are saved by works but does the catholic church teach this so we're going to be answering that question in this video now i've already done a full-on in-depth version of this video and i'll have it linked down below but we're going to just be addressing does the catholic church teach this but if you want to have more information on this topic of salvation and works please check out the description bar for the link to that video so without further ado let us get on with the video but before we do i just want to encourage you if you happen to like this video please give it a like and if you didn't like this video please give it a dislike it lets me know if you guys like this type of content and if you like me and you're new here please hit that subscribe button because i would love for you to be a part of this that one catholic girl family but let's get into the video so what does the catholic church teach when it talks about faith and works well a good place to start is looking at the catechism of the catholic church and other church documents but before we get into that i want to take us through a little bit of a definition thing because this is something that not a lot of people know about and it's just a fun fact a new word for you to know so do you know what catholic soteriology is oh my gosh soteriology Soteriology. See, I don't even know how to pronounce the word. Anyways, well, what is Catholic soteriology? Well, Catholic soteriology is the salvation theology of the church. It's And works are a part of that. So maybe we're having, going to have a question of semantics because uh, they don't want to say it's salvation by works, but works are a part what the church teaches about salvation. So what does Catholic soteriology teach? Well, Catholic soteriology teaches that it's by God's grace that we are saved. Every group, including the Judaizers, say it's God's grace. I'm going to prove this to you. I Well, around five years ago today, the Pope was in Philadelphia and I went up to a bunch of Jehovah's Witnesses because, oh, we believe in God's grace. Operation Saint Supreme, we believe in God's grace. And I went up to uh, a bunch of um, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses who are very works-oriented, even more so than Catholicism. What do they say? Oh, we're saved by God's grace. Same thing. All right. You are severed from Christ, you who would be justified by the law, you have fallen away from grace. So why am I showing you this? Because why would Paul have to say this if he didn't, f if the Judaizers who the Galatians, uh, this was in response to the Judaizing influence in Galatia, why would he warn against falling away from grace if the Judaizers didn't think they had grace? So what we're going to be fighting here and is that what we argue for is the sufficiency of grace and that if you add anything to grace, you destroy grace. And what they're saying, what, what one Catholic girl, uh, or Vanessa, if, you, if I may call her Vanessa, uh, what Vanessa is going to be arguing for is, oh, we believe in the necessity of grace, but there's no group, no matter how Pelagian, that doesn't believe in... Uh, Pelagius was a British heretic who uh, essentially you could pull yourself up from the bootstrap sort of which uh, uh, Roman Catholicism does condemn as well. But no matter how far Pelagian you get, uh, whether that's Jehovah Witnesses or Mormons or even Muslims or whomever, I don't know of a single theistic group 
who doesn't believe in God's grace. So just saying, oh, we believe we need God's grace, isn't the point at hand. The point at hand is the sufficiency. That's all you need. And not just the sufficiency, but that if you add to it, you destroy it, as uh, Paul says here. The Catholic Church has never taught and never mentioned that we can earn or merit our own salvation. In uh, but you do have to work to keep it. In fact, the Catholic Church has actually condemned this belief of works righteousness, and this is called the heresy of Pelagianism, and this was condemned in the 5th century at the Council of Carthage. And we can see that later on, this was further talked about in the 16th century at the Council of Trent. And no, I'm not talking about the podcast. I'm talking about the Council of Trent that took place in the 16th century. They had a few canons where they talked about this heresy. Canon 6 explains, If anyone saith that the man may be justified before God by his own works, whether done through the teaching of human nature or that of the law, without the grace of God, through Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. Again, we're, we're arguing over the sufficiency, not the necessity of grace. I guess it's going to be a repeated, repeated pattern. I'm going to let this go, uh, see if she breaks new ground before I call quits on this video. Just just for repetition's sake, I will post a link to the her whole video. Canon 9 explains, If anyone saith that by faith alone the impious is justified, in such wise as to mean that nothing else is required to cooperate in order to the obtaining the grace of justification, and that it is not in any way necessary that he be prepared and disposed by the movement of his own will, let him be anathema. And the decree on justification 8 says, In what manner is it to be understood that the impious is justified by faith and gratuitously? And whereas the apostle saith that man is justified by faith and freely, those words are to be understood in that sense, which the perpetual consent of the Catholic Church hath held and expressed, to wit, that we are therefore said to be justified by faith, because faith is the beginning of human salvation. Oh, because faith is the beginning. Let me get, let me, can I get my highlighter out? All right. Because faith is the beginning of human salvation. Oh, you, you get in by faith. But then you got to work real hard. And you never know how hard you work. Just like the Judaizers, this is no different than the Judaizers. The foundation and root. Oh, faith is the foundation and root of all justification. That's great. But guess what? If you have to keep working, you have to be perfect. And if you have to be perfect, you're going to be condemned. Oh, I mean, you need faith, without which is impossible. Please. I don't... I don't think there's anything in here that a Judaizer would disagree with, but is condemned, right, by Paul. But we therefore are said to be justified freely. Here, let's let her, let's let her uh, continue. Salvation, the foundation, and the root of all justification, without which it is impossible to please God, and to come unto the fellowship of his sons. But we are therefore said to be justified freely, because that none of those things... Those things which precede justification, whether faith or works, merit the grace itself of justification. For if it be a grace, it is not now by works. Otherwise, as the same apostle says, grace is no more grace. He's just talking about initial justification. So my my complaints would uh, would stand. The Catechism of the Catholic Church also has something to say on the matter. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2007, says, With regard to God, there is no strict right to any merit on the part of man. Between God and us, there is an immeasurable inequality, for we have received everything from him, our Creator. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2008, says, The merit of man before God in the Christian life arises from the fact that God has freely chosen to associate man with the work of his grace. Okay, but you still got to continue with works. The fatherly action of God is first on his own initiative. Well, we just started. That's great. 
and then follows man's free acting through his collaboration. Oh, this is where we get the issue, right? All right. And then follows man free acting through his collaboration. I've done a video in the past, I'll link in the description, how you can know justification by faith alone is true, is that God wants to remove boasting. So once you add works, then you allow grounds for boasting. Be the same critique here uh, for Vanessa. So that the merit of good works is to be attributed in the first place to the grace of God. Okay, but if I don't, if, if, if the person next to me in the pew goes to hell, and I don't, and we're both initially um, justified, and we both got his initial grace, what is the difference between the two of us? Is the difference between the two of us due to God's grace or is it due to something in me? It has to be due to something due to me. I'm either more moral in some respect, I'm either smarter, more holy, something like that. Then to the faithful. Man's merit, moreover, itself is due to God, for his good actions proceed in Christ, for the predispositions and assistance given by the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Holy Spirit helps out. But still, at the end of the day, between me and the guy next to the pew, next to me in the pew, there's the difference has to be due to something in me. So from these writings, we can see that the Catholic Church teaches and understands that we are saved by God, and it's through our own collaboration with this gift. Oh, there is the poison pill, the collaboration that we are taught to work out our salvation, as St. Paul teaches us. Uh, the work out the salvation is like uh, working out the shampoo in your hair. It, it means you have the salvation and then you work it out into your life. It doesn't mean you keep working for salvation. And I think that's where most Catholics use this verse, so you kind of undermine yourself here. So no, the Catholic Church does not teach that we are saved by works, nor does the Catholic Church that we are saved by faith alone, nor does the Catholic Church teach... Oh, so if it's not by faith alone, then it does include works? ...that we are saved by works alone, but the Catholic Church teaches that we are saved by God's grace. But we are... Okay. We are saved by God's grace that we accept, and... We accept, there's the grounds for boasting... This is why you know the system is false, because it allows for boasting. We show this acceptance of this gift that God has given us by having faith in him and doing good work. So even though... Oh, it's more than showing. Because classical Protestant theology would be a, a showing, a proving, a evidence. But it's more than that. Oh, this teaching slightly aligns with what the Protestant churches believe that they teach. However, some churches teach that you're saved by faith alone. That's a story for another time. Check out the description bar for videos on that topic. But a lot of Protestant churches understand that when you have faith, you do good works. We are in agreement here. But you, are you in agreement here? Because you can have faith and not do good works and go to hell, right? I mean, that's how you uh, understand James. You don't understand James is using faith in a different definition. I mean, one of the things you have to learn in Catholic apologetics is to try to keep all their arguments straight to see how they kind of contradict with each other because at the, the point in time, they're worried about this this topic right here. They They, they, they want to defend this point here. But then you notice, hey, when they're trying to defend something completely different, they're, they're, that argument doesn't work with this argument. And that's kind of what I'm noticing here. Eh, anyway. But for some reason, the idea of work still bothers a lot of people. So for the Well, it bothers me because if you add works, 
you're going to go to hell. And you're going to go to hell because they're not perfect. God is holy. You either compromise God's standard of holiness or you got to do some other thing. Or kind of bring that standard down is, is really the only way you, you can do it. Or you can live in fear, I guess, because you actually know what's going on. You actually know God's holiness. The Protestants that are bothered by the word works when we're talking about salvation, we must remember that there are other works, not just good works, that play a role in our salvation or our justification, such as sin. When we sin, that is a work. How does it make this argument any better, more palatable to a, to a, yes, my works contribute to the need for me to be saved. I'll give you that. And we are causing offense to God. We are separating our... And Vanessa, I pray you're going to watch this. Your works are always tainted with sin. Let's go back and, and, and hear what you said here. Salvation or justification, such as sin. When we sin, that is a work, and we are causing offense to God. We are Even your best work is going to be tainted with sin in this life. You need to be covered by the blood of Jesus. And when you try to add works to faith, what you are saying to Jesus is that you, or, or God the Father, what you are saying is you want to be judged by his standard of perfection. And when that happens, you are going to be in big, big trouble. We are separating ourselves from God. So not all the time is work talking about praying the rosary or going to mass, but a work is talking about sin sometimes or saying... Uh, my friend uh, who used to blog on Tria Blog, or Tria Blog, uh, would say a lot of times the way officially is defined, the works are actually the sacraments. So, just wanted to throw that out there. Lord's name in vain, or breaking one of His Ten Commandments. So keep that in mind next time that you're like, oh, I don't want to talk about works when we're talking about faith, because we must understand that we are called in Scripture to not sin, to not break the Ten Commandments, and we have to understand that when we sin, that is a work against God. So well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, I guess that's it. I hope this was clarifying. We just don't. Everybody agrees with the need of grace. How many, very, very few agree with the necessity of grace? All right. God bless.